Hello everyone, Most Wanted here. <clears throat> um, I want to create a quarry setup and I want to process all my ores and I've been looking at some of the potential ways to do it and um, the limiting factor is I want to try and use MJ power, uh, Billcraft power to run it. I don't really want to use EU, I really don't have a strong EU setup right now. And <clears throat> The EU setups that are available really don't go beyond purely doubling the ores. Um, and there's no way to do the whole processing, I don't think, from ore to ingots in, in one machine. Uh, maybe there is. Maybe there is. Um, uh, what I want to use is an induction smelter. It is a uh, thermal expansion mod, and uh, it's a mod that can produce uh, two ingots with the use of one sand. And there's also, depending on the ores, there's a potential for what's called a rich slag. So for instance, iron, 5% chance of uh, rich slag, 75% chance of regular slag. And regular slag can be used, <coughs> I think, to create mulch. Um, here's uh, copper, here is tin, and here showing you rich slag with any ingot triples your output. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, you've got a, a fixed amount of potential to generate rich slag uh, as a byproduct when you smelt ores and a percentage uh, to output slag which could be used for uh, fertilizer I think. I, I forget exactly what slags used for. <coughs> eh, I'll have to look it up later but I, I know slag has a use. Um, I, I think it's forestry but I could be wrong. Um, so uh, the fact that we're using one machine over two machines, um, MJ-wise, there, there isn't a difference. You'd spend roughly the same amount of MJ if you attempted to use both machines, say a, a pulverizer and a furnace, than if you attempted to use just the induction smelter. So there's no loss in MJ, I don't think there. Um, both machines are pretty quick, but I think the induction smelter is a little faster. Um, than individually a, a, a pulver, uh, pulverizer or a uh, uh, le electric furnace, I think it is. Uh, so that's why I want to go with induction smelter, but I want to put this in the middle of a, a processing center that's going to handle quarries and other machine type of outputs. Um, so it needs to be able to handle um, a decent amount of input where I'm not forced to manually manage sand worry about how I'm getting the sand, where's the sand coming from, is there a large enough s you know, supply of sand right now, if there isn't, where do I go to get it, you know what I'm saying? So um, I want to automate the, the generation of the sand, um, so what I'm choosing to do is to generate the sand rather than, um, uh, auto in an automated fashion, rather than manually. As you see the sand, uh, when it's used, it's instantly replaced. And here's the setup I have for the machine's configuration. My input is from the top, which I could potentially have a bunch of hoppers uh, fed fed uh, by tubes or pipes. And then the machine will process what's in the hoppers. The uh, left side green, I've got sand coming in from this uh, transposer. I also have a secondary green output, uh, which I'll talk about in a second, and then the bottom I have uh, my slag and my rich slag going out the bottom and on the right I've got my ingot output. The ingot output will probably go into a buffer into a tube network and then will go through filters and end up in a barrel network of sorts. So that's where um, the output would end up. So the machine's pretty much set up to receive power in the front and then all its other sides are pretty much configured. The secondary green output is where I have this gate. Now the gate is on this side 
because I want it to be able to read what's in this slot. When this slot is empty, I want it to send a pulse. And you see, as the slot empties, it does send a pulse. It sends a pulse to the transposer, where the transposer gets sand from the fabricator. This fabricator is taking grass and a minimum stone and producing sand. The grass is coming from here, where it's taking cobblestone and a minimum stone and converting uh, it into grass, which this table uses. And then the cobblestone is coming from this chest, and this chest is receiving cobblestone from uh, a barrel via a uh, transposer. So this barrel and transposer could be virtually anywhere. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a decent enough buffer of um, cobblestone in your chest, all you need to make sure is at the same rate it's being used, it's being replaced so your chest doesn't end up empty. So this could, this part of your network could be uh, in your room where your um, your quarry is outputting cobblestone, and uh, the rest of this could be in the center of your manufacturing area um, where it's generating sand for you. And if you look at the table, this is just the recipe. This is not an actual minimum stone that's being used in the in the production of the grass. The minimum stone that's being used is inside this large chest. And the reason why I have a large chest is if it was a single chest here, then this fabricator could not use a minimum stone that was in the inventory of a chest that was over here. So I have a double chest. That means one inventory, you know, that I have to worry about that is accessible to both tables. So I've watched the stone go down. It goes down to roughly 1600. The damage multiplier uh, goes up to about 1600. So that's 1,600 uh, units that one table can push through uh, before the minimum stone dies. And considering you have to push cobblestone in here, and then grass in here, and sand out here, that's two minimum stones that are being used to generate sand. So that's 1,600. Um, that's 1,600 damage is being split, and ends up being 800 uh, cycles. So 800 cycles of your uh, induction smelter, you're going to have a supply of sand before you ever have to look to replace the minimum stone. So if you check the cycle time of the recipes uh, of, of the induction smelter, we'll just quick count here. It's about five seconds. So with 800 cycles, um, that's 4,000 seconds. Round that by 60. You've got 66 hours worth of output of your induction smelter with two brand new uh, minimum stones. That's if the induction smelter is running 100% for those 66 hours, you'll get 66 hours worth of output. So that's a lot of sand and a lot of output for two minimum stones. And although minimum stones are kind of a pain in the butt to generate, uh, they require a piece of gold and two, uh, four pieces of iron and a stone and then of course you need uh, shards. Shards are really easy to get. Um, you know the minimum stones aren't that pricey and the fact that you're going to get 66 hours worth of output um, for two stones I think it's it's really nice and it gives you an opportunity to use all of that cobblestone that you're generating. Of course you're going to not be using as much as you're generating but you'll be using some of it. Your, your cobblestone will actually be useful for doing something more than generating, you know, stone bricks. So um, that's kind of the idea behind the system. I could take something that is really a, a waste stream and turn it into something that's useful that increases the output of uh, my quarries. Um, as those gold slags drop, I can choose which. I, I could take those gold slags into another induction smelter that's completely off of my production side and I could filter out say gold or I could filter out cobble not cobble, copper uh, ores out of my processing center, send it to a separate barrel and then I could you know, manually uh, smelt tripling the output or you could use a filter of some sort to filter through the, uh, the output and just have a secondary smelter running purely on uh, rich slag. So here's how the system works and uh, it's really simple.
we're talking about two fabricators. Fabricators are really uh, cheap. The uh, the filters are cheap. The chests are cheap. Um, of course, you're gonna have your own power system uh, and your choice of how you're going to manage your power system um, to run your your uh, induction smelter. This is just the test world, so I dropped the cell just to uh, just to run the test. So that's the setup, and I think it's a really nice way of uh, managing any ores that are going to be coming from a quarry. If if you have a crazy mining machine that mines something like 70 odd stacks per minute or something like that, you might want more induction smelters, which means uh, more sand is going to move for your system. If if you had two um, smelters, then you went from 66 hours to 33. If you had four, then of course it it gets cut by quarter. So you could potentially burn through a lot of minimum stones, but because your output's so high, I think you're going to recover pretty easily. You know, that one ingot of gold and the four ingots of iron, and you know, if, if you run an issue uh, trying to get your hands on shards, then you could create yourself a, um, a spawner of sorts and and uh, and use the spawner to generate your uh, shards, but you know, it's not that bad. Uh, I think it's a really nice way of of taking the ore, turning them into ingots, in a way that um, is completely automated. I, I can't think of another machine in its place of induction smelter that's a single machine setup that wouldn't end up generating uh, requiring a much more power. The thing only sips four MJ per tick when it's at max output, but it is completely capable of running at one MJ or two MJ or three MJ, depending on your needs uh, of the smelter. If your smelter is running, you know, a lot of input through it, then you're going to want to make sure you're at full speed. If not, then you don't have to be at full speed. It uh, the thermal expansion mods throttle based on how much power is available. So that's kind of it. Um, I really don't have any much more to say about the setup. So um, I'll just go ahead and throw some ingots in or uh, some ore in. And you can watch the system run completely automated. most wanted. Uh, thanks for watching the video and if it was all helpful or entertaining then please like the video. If, uh, if you had any questions, comments, or ideas how to improve the setup then please leave some feedback in the video. Thanks.